everyone. Uh, my name is Marcelo Mohish, and I'm a program manager here at Halcyon. Welcome to Halcyon's Score 18 Showcase and Celebration, the culmination of an incredible 14-week journey. Today, we celebrate the remarkable achievements of eight ventures from across the globe that are growing their business and making a profound impact in our world. I want to start by congratulating them on their bravery and audacity. They come from different walks of life, but have one thing in common. They had an idea and they acted on it. They are capable and passionate entrepreneurs who face daily the inherent risks of creating something. Uh, this is what Halcyon is all about, big risks and bold ideas. In the world of entrepreneurship, risk is not merely a word. It is the fuel that propels innovation forward. It is the catalyst that transforms ideas into reality and the essence of the journey that led us to this moment. The risks are all around us. With the excitement of novelty may come a level of uncertainty uh, about the future. We can know for sure if our bank is gonna shut down tomorrow or which jobs AI is gonna take over. You can even know for sure if I uh, am the one that written this or ChatGPT wrote this for me. <laughs> our fellows, they take risks every day when they work to save lives, to improve access to clean water, to connect people to the digital world, help farmers put food on people's tables, and empower mothers to keep providing for their families. They also took a risk when they decided to move to Washington DC for 14 weeks to help them take the next step in their ventures. Thank you for choosing Halcyon. I would also like to extend our gratitude to you, our Halcyon community. We are able to provide entrepreneurs with the tools they need to succeed thanks to the hard work and trust of many organizations and individuals. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Let me get them on screen before I forget. Uh, SNR Evermay, Amazon Web Services, Arnold & Porter, Baker Bots, Capital One, Deloitte, and the HRCH. Your continued support and trust makes all of this possible. I would also like to thank everyone who connected and engaged with our fellows throughout the residency with us, from coaches to advisors, presenters, facilitators, and so many experts and professionals that shared their knowledge and resources with these entrepreneurs. And of course, my Halcyon team, uh, relentlessly dedicated to accelerating the impact-driven future of business, never forgetting to be kind and see the human beings behind each big risk and bold idea. It was a privilege to work with this group of entrepreneurs. I'm inspired by their vision and resilience. We saw the highs in moments of triumph and growth and the lows that will serve as stepping stones for future success. We also saw them share their knowledge and curiosity. We saw them dance. We saw them be excited about the food when it was similar to the ones of their countries. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, we all laughed and we all learned so much. And here we are at the showcase and celebration of this incredible journey. You will see eight amazing pitches. After that, we'll have the opportunity to connect over food and drinks at the back. Go talk to the fellows. Share a little bit of your knowledge and connect them with people you know can help them. Take the risk of empowering their vision. And if you believe you can support early stage impact driven entrepreneurs, let's talk later. There are many ways to engage with us and as Halcyon grows, we want our community to grow with us. Brace yourselves for a whirlwind of ideas, innovation and a glimpse into the impact driven future of business uh, as we welcome our first entrepreneur on stage. I'm pleased to introduce to you the man with the coolest handshake and the documentarian of our breakfast all the way from Accra, Ghana, Kelvin Ashi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kelvin Ashi from Accra, Ghana. And my company, Health Diet Global, is focused on building personalized modern healthcare experiences for millions of Africans. 
When I was in high school, I unfortunately lost my dad after he had been taken ill shortly. What was supposed to be a simple medical appointment turned out to be a catastrophic healthcare outcome. The doctors on duty unfortunately messed up the situation. This is the issue for millions of other Africans. Every single year, over 600 million Africans are denied access to essential healthcare services. And furthermore, over 50 million Africans are driven into extreme poverty due to high healthcare costs. Why should this be a problem? Unfortunately, there's untimely access to healthcare, poor healthcare information systems, and lack of access to affordable healthcare financing. This is why we decided to take the risk to start Health Direct Global. Our solution, known as Kelly, is a multi-sided platform which connects patients to a network of healthcare providers, pharmacies, and insurance companies to help them access timely, quality, and affordable healthcare. To simply explain how it works, users are able to consult with doctors either virtually or book in-person appointments to the nearest healthcare provider. The doctors, once consulting with the patients, are able to provide prescription medication, and this is delivered to patients in less than an hour. On the back end, our analytics engine helps pharmacies and pharma companies better plan their distribution and efficiently match their inventory. For patients, we help deliver faster access to care. We help them access over 40% of cost savings and better more, provide on-demand medication delivery. Now for healthcare providers, we help improve the delivery of care through better organized processes. We help them increase revenue through multi-channel bookings and better more, help them access faster claim settlements from insurance companies. The market is huge, with Ghana's primary healthcare market marked at $1.2 billion by the World Bank. West Africa is mapped at $16 billion, and the continent of Africa is mapped for $65 billion as an exciting opportunity. Our revenue model is twofold. Through B2B channels, we make money through SaaS subscriptions from healthcare providers, corporate healthcare plans, and service fees from health insurance companies. And from patients, we make money through telehealth charges, micro insurance subscriptions, and medication delivery. In terms of traction, over the past three years, we've been able to serve over 350 healthcare providers and deliver faster access to care to over 19,000 patients. We are currently raising a seed round of $1 million. Our cap table is fresh, juicy, and no investor yet. <laughs> but we are going to invest this money into technology infrastructure, sales and marketing, and kick off our growth engine with strong partnerships. Over the next 12 months, we are looking to serve an additional 120,000 health um, patients, onboard over 180 new healthcare providers, and deliver over 60,000 medications to our patients across Ghana and West Africa. Our projected revenue growth see, sees us having $1.6 million in 2024, $2.8 million in 2025, and $4.2 million in 2026. Our partners, led by the incredible Halcyon, which has empowered us to connect to the DC and the US ecosystem, have been incredible support for us. We are looking forward to more partners and more introductions. This idea is led by a team that is incredible, diverse, talented, and taxed for the task at hand. We have over 40 years of combined experience in sales and marketing, health insurance, healthcare practice, software engineering, and growth hacking. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a pain, there's a problem, but join us to transform the future of healthcare in Ghana and the rest of Africa. Thank you. Now, to introduce my friend, my brother, from the land of Afrobeats, and the man who has tried more cuisine than ever in his lifetime, Mr. Emeka. <laughs> oh, okay.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Watching America, and I'm the founder of Kitovu Technology Company, a startup that builds climate smart farming and post harvest infrastructure for African agriculture. In 2014, the Oyo State Government gave young people like me the opportunity to start their own farms without the burden of land ownership. That year, I discovered the true meaning of suffering. I went through a lot trying to run that farm, and I experienced a lot of losses in the course of running this farm because I largely relied on traditional knowledge and guesswork to make my decisions. And as a result of that, I had very, very low yields. I lost a huge percentage of my crops, and I ended up almost regretting why I took on that opportunity. It would take me the next four years, but I eventually figured it out. I built a system that could solve those problems. And then I decided to help Nigeria's 64 million smallholder farmers who are responsible for 80% of the food we eat to solve this same problem. Fast forward to today, we've enabled over 16,500 smallholder farmers to transform their livelihoods. I'm sure you are curious to know how we did that. So let me show you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the Kitovu Agricultural Operating System. It's a suite of solutions that enables farmers to assess the data to make smart decisions right from inputs to harvest. And the way it works is, first of all, it allows us to collect data, soil data, field data, market demand data, and satellite images. We have a special algorithm that analyzes this information to provide tailored advisory for the farmers. It allows us to match the farmer with the right inputs that they require. And then, at harvest, we aggregate everything that the farmer has produced and supply to commodity buyers. For farmers who don't want to sell immediately, we allow them to store their farm produce. And when they store it, we have a system that enables their stored goods become collateral for them to receive financing. It's the first of its kind in Nigeria. The way we make money is by charging farmers a 14.5 post-paid subscription on our service and the cost of inputs we supply them. We also make $6 per ton for every ton of goods stored. Additionally, we make a 13% margin each time we supply commodity buyers and processors, farm produce. In Nigeria, it's a $150 billion market. But we are thinly focused on 2.29 million smallholder farmers who have a combined market demand of about $500 million across the demand for inputs and commodities. But we are hardly the only players in this market. However, our unique differentiation is our ability to provide smallholder farmers with end-to-end -end support, personalized agronomic advisory. But that's not all. The sweet spot is that all the services we provide smallholder farmers, we do that without any upfront requirement for payment, which removes the hindrance of access to these services to these farmers. We have a rock star team with a combined 67 years experience across agronomy, technology, sales, marketing. And working together, we've been able to train 317 field agents and empower over 16,500 smallholder farmers. We've also hit over $400,000 in revenue to date. These farmers that we supported have been able to increase their crop yields by 30%. They've been able to cut down post-harvest losses by 20%. And they've also increased their annual incomes by 40%. But that's not all. Because of the regenerative agricultural practices we provide, Farmers, through their interventions, have been able to save 
over 180,000 tons in greenhouse gas emissions. We know we can do much more than this. And that's why today we are looking to raise $500,000 in equity. We're also looking to raise an additional $500,000 in revolving credit. This will go into our marketing, building out our product, and also hiring case staff. This funding will enable us reach an additional 50,000 smallholder farmers and enable us to be on target to hit 1 million in annual revenue by 2027. Kitovu has built a system that clearly works and is empowering smallholder farmers. If you're here today, and like me, you are concerned about the future of food, come talk to me today at the end of this event. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, um, today, I have the singular privilege to introduce my friends and one of the people that have made me to expand the horizon of my palettes. <laughs> my friends from the land of the pharaohs, a land rich and infused with culture and history. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Tema and Saha of Safi Water. Hello, thanks for having us today. Globally, can I, can I start or what? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I'm a bit nervous though. <laughs> Globally, the quarter of the world's population has no access to clean drinkable water. Meaning, as we are sitting here right now, there are 2.1 billion people struggling to access safe drinkable water. At Safi Water, we developed a new water purification technology that is able to convert the highly contaminated water into clean, drinkable water in the smartest and the most sustainable way. Our solution is simple, scalable, sustainable, scientifically and field proven, and also safe to use. Simple because we developed a new water purification method that is mimicking the same water purification mechanism happening naturally in the purest water bodies in the world. Our solution simply is a biopurification membrane that is able to fully remove the, like the pathogens and heavy metals from the contaminated water and converting it into naturally clean and healthy drinkable water. Thanks to the flexibility of our water purification membrane, we are able to use it to build different applications for different users. As we already have Safi Water Community, which is a large water purification machine that gives access to clean, drinkable water to an entire communities living in remote rural areas. We already have two running pilots, one in the Indian Himalayan region and one in the Egyptian desert area, and recently we did a full implementation based on this product. Also, we succeeded to, to minimize the size of our biopurifier, and we're using it in our uniquely designed, eco-friendly Safi water bottle to guarantee our users clean, drinkable water wherever they go. In addition to that, we have the potential to build more products in the future, even for non-drinking purposes, like uh, industrial unit to treat the liquid industrial wastes um, instead of throwing it to the ecosystem. By the end of our water purification membrane life cycle, it becomes 100% biodegradable, meaning we are not leaving any environmental waste behind us during and after the water purification process. We are a patented technology with a lot of recognitions from wonderful organizations from all over the world. Also, we won different awards for our development's work. 
We're only using eco-friendly materials to build our products. Also, uh, our water purification membrane only works to remove the contaminants from the contaminated water without removing the water's na natural minerals, which is very important for our organs to function. In addition to that, we are designing our system to, re uh, to prevent any biological contamination from happening inside or outside the, our purifiers. Our latest implementation was a big challenge for our technology in one of the toughest environmental ecosystems in the world. A remote village, village exists in nowhere with a very limited environmental resources, no clean water source around or close to the village, and no electricity. In fact, the men in this village have to drive for 150 kilometers twice a week to get their families clean drinkable water. By deploying our system there, we succeeded to give access to clean drinkable water for uh, like to 10,000 people living in the depths of the Egyptian desert. So, the global water market is huge and it's growing so fast. It's expected to reach over than 95 billion USDs by 2030. We are targeting MENA region, which was defined our beach head market. So, the MENA, it's not only a regional group of 23 nations, it's a force that working together to optimize peace and economic growth. The market of over than 400 million consumers that will double in size in only 15 years. Also, seven out of the 10 countries with water scarcity are in this region. We have different revenue streams through different products that suits every customer needs. So we sell our product directly, we sell the spare parts. Also for the community machine, we are targeting NGOs, governmental organization, and big real estate developers to implement the full project responsible for the implementation and the maintenance. Also, we have a license model for our technology. We are raising 2.5 million USDs as a seed round that will help us to just grow our team, early market, traction and also develop partnership. That will help us to reach our expected revenue by 2028, which will be 81.4 million USD. We are also looking for partners from water NGOs, governmental organizations that will increase the access of clean, drinkable water safely and sustainably. We are a team of four with two amazing mentors that supported us from the very beginning. If you want to learn more about how we are bringing a progressive change in the methods of water purification currently followed in the world, please come and talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to introduce a great friend, a great entrepreneur who loves and eat Ugali all the week, all the year, Sebrian Moses Makangaru. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cyprian Moses Makangaru. I'm a founder of Tiba Labs Company Limited, based in Tanzania, East Africa. This is Aretha Beth, excited for the arrival of her newborn baby. This is a moment she has been waiting for in months. But her baby was suffering from jaundice, hypothermia, and sepsis infection. At the hospital that Aretha Beth was admitted, she had to wait for hours before her baby got treated. There were a waiting queue of over 10 babies that were waiting for the treatment of the phototherapy that was available in that hospital. At Tiba Labs, we wanted to bring change to this because globally, over 2.6 million newborn deaths happen every single year. Out of that 2.6 million, 79% of those deaths happen in Sub-Saharan Africa. To give you some context, 2.6 million, that is four times the population of DC district. 
and 79% happen in sub-Saharan Africa. And out of those, 90% of the deaths happening, they are due to hypothermia and jaundice. At TB Labs, we innovated a phototherapy, that is a three-in-one device, treating jaundice, hypothermia, and also prevent sepsis infection. The device is programmed to compute assessments and predictive analytics of the baby vital signs and how the treatment is changing. We have been able to help over 3,500 newborn babies, bringing smiles for countless mothers and fathers who have seen their babies improve over time. Our technology combines the power of light therapy with convenience and affordability. We are conveniently located in Eastern Africa, Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam is the gateway to over five landlocked countries. Bringing the power of us bringing the technology to the convenient places of mothers and parents who need it the most. Our technology is 50% less than the competing products in the market. We also have different business models. We work with different distributors, suppliers, and different corporates as well as foundations. We were able to help a mother like Elizabeth because of the supply agreements that we have with one distributor. And we are also looking forward for more distributors. We have a partnership with one of the government agencies called DIT, bringing the product to different government hospitals in Tanzania. The market is huge. We are now targeting Tanzanian market. And from next year, we'll be expanding to Eastern Africa, specifically Uganda. In Uganda, as you've seen in our previous slide, also jaundice is the number one cause of neonatal death. And we want to focus on that region to bring more impact in the country. Our current scope is only jaundice for now, but the phototherapy technology has unlimited potential. It can be used as well to treat different skin diseases. And we have a program for two years plan of launching different phototherapy for treating skin diseases. We started R&D in February this year, and we're expecting to launch phototherapy for treating skin diseases by October. To do that, we need an investment of 500,000 in May to June to ensure that we are able to do that. We've been accepted to join the Johnson & Johnson Innovation Program here in DC to accelerate the technology and be able to bring that product to the market. Next year, we want to go green. We are still in conversation with some of environmental friendly organization to supply us with products and refurbished electronics and circuits to ensure that we also support going green initiatives. We are able to do this kind of impact because of an amazing team with a combined experience of over 50 years. But we come from different diverse backgrounds and different experiences and skills. But we are together because we share the common goal of creating a world where every mother, every mother in Africa has a positive birth experience and creating a world where every child has a best start in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not standing here as just the founder of Tiba Labs Company Limited. I'm standing here as the voice of countless mothers and fathers in Africa who have had to endure the pain of watching their babies struggle for their lives. If you want to be part of our mission, I would like to have a conversation with you to explore how we can create a next chapter to the stories of newborns in Africa. Thank you. Now, the next in line is my very good friend, Gotham Paspureti, who every single day since I knew this guy, he runs 10,000 meters across DC like Captain America. <laughs> Join me to welcome Gotham Paspureti. Hello, everyone. I am Gautam Pasupaliti from Biodesign Innovation Labs. We're a medical device and healthcare technology company. Respiratory illnesses is one of the major reasons for deaths globally. 
one in six deaths is due to respiratory illnesses. About 45 to 60 percent of patients who are critically ill require respiratory uh, support. In low resource healthcare settings, use of prolonged manual ventilation is exhaustive, inconsistent, and unreliable. This leads to mortality and morbidity of patients. Presenting Respirate, a patented ventilator technology developed by Biodesign Innovation Labs, is an affordable, safe, reliable alternative for prolonged manual ventilation. It can be used in emergency care, post-operative care, and transport ventilation. It has all essential ventilator parameters. I'm Gautam Pasipaliti, representing Biodesign Innovation Labs. In 2017, my brother Aditya and I started our medical device company with the vision to make healthcare accessible and affordable to all through life-saving innovation. Unfortunately, due to a tragic road accident in 2018 February, I lost my dear brother. This was so tragic that it made me to dedicate my life in building our life-saving medical device technologies over the next four or five years. And fast forward 2020, we launched our product after clinical trials and certifications and approvals. Our device has many applications in emergency rooms, ambulances, post-operative care, and mass casualty. We have seen during COVID-19 how many patients require ventilatory support. And our device helped many patients in India and in Tanzania. We are currently looking to help many patients globally. This is one of our devices being, being helped in a hospital in Kolkata, where the hospital reached out to us when the capacities have reached limit. And we supplied, and the doctor was very grateful for our support and sent us this picture of how the device being helpful during the second wave of pandemic. We are currently looking to access the global market, and our device is just a fraction of cost of the other devices which are there in the market in terms of standard ventilators. The technology is easy to use, it's affordable, and it's pneumatic-based ventilation technology helps paramedic respiratory therapists to help patients during medical emergencies and transport ventilation. We have deployed our devices, our device respirate, in various hospitals across India over the course from 2020 to 2021, and currently being used across hospitals in India from commercialization, clinical trials, and validation. The market opportunity for this product is in the EMS and in the post-operative and transport ventilation. We are looking to get the FDA approval currently, which is a six months away, and we require current market access with going through investment. We're looking at EMS and transport ventilation, which is about a huge market for us in India as well as in the US. Our go-to-market strategy is working with distributors, GPOs, NGOs, and nonprofits so we can help identify hospitals that are in need of immediate emergency ventilators and transport emergency care. If you look at our journey, we started in 2017 with a small grant from Mass General Hospital Initiative with our Respirate project, and we went on to do R&D with various clinical support and from hospitals and research and development for various grants that we received from Government of India and various partners in US. Our team consists of doctors, engineers, and researchers who are passionate about saving lives and improving quality of care. And we have been working over the past five, six years in developing our indigenous innovation, which can help millions of patients globally in saving lives and improving quality of care. I would like to thank Halcyon for this amazing opportunity, supporting us over the last three, four months in providing this opportunity, getting this incubation program and fellowship here in Washington, DC. And we were also being grateful because without Halcyon support, we would not be getting into so many opportunities, meeting wonderful people like you. We also got into Johnson & Johnson program. We're excited about the future in saving lives. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us and supporting us in this program. And uh, if you're interested in our work and would like to support, please talk to me. Thank you very much. So we are fundraising right now. So we have just have a commitment of three million and we are closing another two million. So that is also another thanks to Halcyon for the wonderful introductions they made. This is the fundraising breakup and this is our action plan. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next, next, I would like to introduce my very good friend, Patrick, who's been an amazing friend. And uh, he's also been rumored to be the next uh, uh, president of Rwanda sometime in the future. <laughs>
Thank you, Gotham, for being so kind. I hope that happens. <laughs> and don't mind the cheer, because, because until 2019, I did not own a smartphone. And that adds me to statistics. Over 300 million Africans are digitally disconnected, partly because they are unable to afford the phones or the laptops. And yet it's very ironic, just like many of us have phones here or have laptops, annually we have 50 million tons of e-waste going to landfills. If you're able to trace this and refurbish it, we can be able to bridge the existing digital divide and get millions of Africans online. At Wellzone, we realize that there is an opportunity we can be able to tap into and change lives and also make something greater of it. We innovated something that a marketplace that connects high earning households with low earning households. And how we do this, we acquire smartphones and different other electronics or laptops. We refurbish them and make them accessible to low earning households. We work with, um, to be able to access the high earning households, we do social media and ads, and then to be able to reach out to the low earning households, knowing that they're offline, we have a community of sales agents who are based in their specific communities, and they make all these distributions possible. Oh, sorry. And over the last four years, we've been able to refurbish over 460 tons of US. We've been able to digitize over 3,000 households. And for the very first time, just like me, we've been able to have over 1,200 households get online. Our business, mo our business model is quite simple. It's a B2C and then a B2B. For a B2C, we charge a 10% commission on every transaction. And for a B2B, because they often transact in bulk, we charge a 50 to 250 USD in subscription monthly. And we are playing in quite a growing market. In East Africa alone, the market is valued at 7, 8 million US dollars. And in Africa, it's at 200, 210 million US dollars. And this is definitely going to be getting more as time goes. And that's why we're here and appealing and raising for the very first time a pre-seed of a million US dollars. So you can be able to upskill the talent we have right now and then you know, attract more powerful talent and retain this talent. Then you can be able to improve our operations, make sure that we refurbish our, we expand our refurbishment lab and better market our products and position ourselves to different global corporations that we aspire to work with. Further, we want to go ahead and also improve our product, make it more efficient, more effective. So by 2024, we're having 50 recurrent users and then be able to um, divert 25,000 tons of e-waste by 2025 and scale to five other countries in Africa. From our financial projections, we realize by 2026 we can be able to break even and get profitable in the years that follow. We have an incredible team. This is just the core team. But we are 19 young, talented people, 11 full-time, and eight interns. We have diverse experience that combined together six years. And we've gone through incredible institutions from Carnage Mellon. Some of us have worked with the European Union. Some of them are electrical, I mean, the engineers, electrical engineers, other scientists, like computer scientists, others are material scientists. And they bring all that experience to make sure that we achieve this powerful goal that we set out for. Here we have two big challenges. We have trash, and we have young people and generations that are left on their offline. This trash, just like many of us have phones and laptops, they'll end up there. And we are calling on to you that you join our goal and our mission so you can transform this trash and make it possible for young people like me that are offline get online. Thank you so much. And I have a privilege of inviting one of my really good friends. Um, he's a scientist, 
And we've been in DC for three months. He's been able to, I won't use the word hack, he doesn't like the word. He's been able to figure out how to gym without paying even a penny. <laughs> <laughs> Olive, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for emphasizing that I can get all the gym discounts, but none of the muscle. <laughs> OK, let me begin. FPX, oh, yeah, that's right. Cool, so hi, I'm Oliver, and I am the co-founder of FPX, an early warning system for epidemics inspired by the simplicity and actionability of weather forecasting. So let me start by clarifying on a misconception. COVID-19 was not a black swan event. Outbreaks with epidemic potential happen once every two years, and false alarms occur daily. All of these events require the attention of government officials at all levels. A bit of a story. Uh, in early 2020, me and my co-founder, Olivia, were working as epidemiologists at Imperial College London. And we noticed a major issue. Traditional outbreak evaluation can take weeks or even months before it reaches decision makers. And this leaves government departments in the dark, unable to plan and respond. And this has very negative implications in terms of poor coordination, slow responses, inefficient use of resources, and ultimately, and most importantly, of course, poor health outcomes on the population level. So we created EPIX to provide the insights needed to support decision-making at the state and local level where we feel it matters most. A bit about the back end of EPIX. We have a bunch of algorithms that collect publicly available data, including, including case data, meteorological data, mobility data, and phylogenetic data. All of this data then gets taken and funneled into another bundle of our algorithms that use uh, methodologies such as um, AI and Bayesian statistics to produce a report. Sorry, let me, um, I got shaky there. Our algorithms that uh, use our data to produce a risk score that is relevant for our users in their localities. And this is a really key point. However, in the front end, you don't get a complicated scientific report. What you get is a very straightforward, actionable, and accessible report that is accessible through our B2G SaaS subscription. And it works with over 90% accuracy. And to test the validity of our forecasting, we've engaged with the media on multiple occasions. And every time we did it, we got it right. The world keeps testing us, and we feel we're getting straight A's. Uh, in 2020, during the, uh, initial, during the initial days of the monkeypox outbreak, we provided the Israeli Ministry of Health with an impact assessment based on global monkeypox transmission. And the key thing here is, we did this eight weeks ahead of reports by traditional, uh, by traditional global health bodies, and before monkeypox even made it to Israel in the first place. This helped the ministry improve accountability, and helped it improve resource allocation, it shortened its response time, and it saved staff time, so they were better prepared for, for monkeypox when it actually arrived to the country. Our competition landscape is a little bit unusual. There's um, global health organizations, there are, there's academia, and there are big consultancies. To put it really briefly, we are obviously faster than academia and uh, global health. Um, our methodology is as robust as that of academia, and key point, we are much, much cheaper than consultancies, which are the only other solution available in the market. Finally, and this is something that we care a lot about, our reports are actionable and directly lend themselves to decision making. And because we are actionable, fast, robust, and affordable, we can address the over 95% of government users that do not have access to insights when they need them most. Okay, so this is our very amazing team. You see next to me, that's my co-founder, Olivia. Uh, between us, we have over 10 years of experience in epidemiology and disease forecasting, and we've worked for many of the major global health organizations out there. This is our even more exciting ecosystem, and I guess this is an opportunity for me to really thank Halcyon. Look, guys, it's been amazing. Thank you. Really, thank you. I mean, seriously. No, no clapping yet. <laughs> um, and my ask. We're looking for partners to improve our B2G SaaS through one of two ways, 
either through pilots, with, um, through state and local authorities in the US, or governments in lower and middle income countries, or through grants and funding through foundations and NGOs. If you want to talk about partnerships, or if you want to talk about the future of pandemic preparedness, please come find me at the end of the pages at the back. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> now, you must know that it is bad luck to say good luck on opening night. Instead, what we typically say is break a leg. <laughs> I assure you that we did not wish the hard break a leg. And yet she did, but she is here, a beacon of resilience. So please, please give her a warm welcome. Hi, my name is Sahar, and I'm the founder of Maziwa. Just to address the elephant in the room, I ran a half marathon in Chicago on Sunday, and I came back in crutches. <laughs> More importantly, while working at a maternity clinic in the outskirts of Kenya, I met a new mother named Isabel. She was a construction site worker and was dreading her return to work because for her, it meant giving up on optimal breastfeeding. Now, unsurprisingly, her construction sites don't have private lactation rooms, so she would need to use an outhouse to express milk. Access to electricity is unreliable, so she can't use an electric breast pump. And even if she managed to express her milk, there's nowhere to store it. Plus, her environment is completely unsupportive, with people chastising her for taking breaks. Like Isabel, 90% of Kenyan women are choosing between staying at home to breastfeed their baby and returning to work to support their families financially. Now, unfortunately, staying at home means that they give up on several months of income and often drop out of the workforce completely after multiple children. This often makes the difference between the poverty line for this family. On the other hand, if she gives up on breastfeeding, her child is 14 times more likely to die prematurely because of serious illnesses such as pneumonia, stunting, and diarrhea. And the mother has a higher risk of cancer and diabetes. To tackle this challenge, Maziwa has launched the Wama Breast Pump, which my Kenyan friend Grace here is demonstrating for us today. And we have a network of community breastfeeding ambassadors. The Wama Breast Pump allows mothers to pump anywhere. It is discreet enough to fit underneath clothing, and it is battery operated and rechargeable, so you can use it without electricity, and it comes with a portable milk storage cooler. Existing competitors do not consider efficiency, discreetness, storage, affordability, and local branding. And Braby formula is not an adequate substitute in Kenya for breast milk because it's often mixed with unsanitary water. That, as a result, existing competitors are only reaching 10% of the market. We aim to reach the remaining 90% with our Community Breastfeeding Ambassador Program. We recruit and train ambassadors through NGO and government partnerships. And we equip them to conduct health talks and support groups. This allows us to provide a certification and supplementary income to these women by allowing them to distribute our products for us. Our market is growing every single year as countries like Kenya start growing their middle class and more and more women enter the workforce. In Kenya alone, our market is $17 million every single year, and across Sub-Saharan Africa, our market is $256 million. And this does not include potential other product launches beyond the breast pump. We reach this market in two key ways. The first is through social media and digital education, while partnering with influencers and healthcare professionals. This allows us to drive our direct-to-consumer and retail sales. On the other hand, we work with county governments and NGOs to recruit a network of ambassadors so that they can deliver our rental model and our corporate package for employers. Our results have been amazing so far. Our marketing on social media has given us a 14 times return on marketing spend for every dollar we invest. Also, a TikTok video that we promoted over December break actually achieved 4 million views organically and went viral uh, without us spending a single penny on it. On the other hand, we've received very high ratings for our educational programming and support groups through our ambassadors. And we've recently just secured $250,000 of non-dilutive funding for this program specifically. So far, we have reached 15,000 mothers and babies, most of whom have been able to balance breastfeeding and working as a result of our breast pump. Some have even said that Maziwa is the best breast pump in the market. More importantly, we're able to reduce 
millions of premature infant deaths and cases of serious illnesses in mothers and babies, all while improving brain development and cognitive function in the future generation of African children and empowering mothers to return to work if they choose. With a decade of experience in healthcare companies like Johnson & Johnson, I'm very proud to lead a team who is a very strong local team with experience at healthcare companies and small local startups. And with your help, we can achieve this vision by raising 750,000 US dollars towards marketing and sales, training our ambassadors, and converting our part-time team to full-time. We've already secured a, a, a third of this funding through non-dilutive grant that we just heard about last week, and we're looking to raise another half million dollars through a safe note. This will allow us to reach 200,000 mothers and babies, train 200 community breastfeeding ambassadors, and generate two million in revenue while achieving profitability just by 2025 alone. So please join us in this journey to ensure that no mother has to choose between her baby's health and her family's economic well-being. Thank you for your time. And now I'd like to introduce the head honcho of the Halcyon program, who has a bigger network in Nairobi than I do, and probably a bigger network in each of our respective countries than each of us do. So welcome to Daniel Barker. Thank you so much, Sahara. Can we give another round of applause to those amazing pictures? That's so phenomenal. Uh, as you can imagine, we hear a lot of pitches here at Halcyon. Uh, in fact, we're in the middle of hearing lots more because we're in the middle of selections. But hearing from these founders today reminds me of why we selected them in the first place. Marcelo mentioned their boldness, their willingness to take risks, and you heard that today. Um, there's so many problems out there in the world. If you've been here before, you've heard me talk about Halcyon Fellows as the antidote to all of the neg negativity that we hear. Uh, I know that I'm going to leave this room energized today. I hope that you're going to leave the same way and feel that energy and that hope for the future. But before you leave, we want you to channel that energy. As the fellows mentioned, as Marcelo mentioned, we have the opportunity to connect with the fellows in the back. Uh, to, and we know we have an, an incredibly talented group in this room. We know all of you have time, talent, treasure particularly treasure, uh, to connect with our fellows. And we really want you to take this opportunity to learn more about their ventures, learn about what they're doing, how they're changing the world, and how we can come together in support of their work. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Halcyon team, and in particular, Adam and Marcelo, for the incredible work they've done over the last 14 weeks to make this possible. And of course, our amazing supporters that Marcelo mentioned. So again, thank you. We are so excited to have you all here and really excited for the connections that you're gonna make in the future with these fellows. Join us for a drink in the back. Thank you. Thank you.